Bill Silas Tupper was born in Berlin, New Hampshire, USA, on July 28, 1907. Tupper graduated from high school in 1925 and continued to help his family in the nursery business in Shirley, Massachusetts until age 19. Tupper also worked as a post office employee and railway labour clerk during his early employment. In 1928, Tupper undertook a course to learn tree surgery at Byron and Stratton. Tupper's reasoning for taking the course was to start his own business landscaping and tending to trees. Tupper's company, the Tupper Tree Doctors Company, operated during the Great Depression. The company allowed for Tupper to explore the opportunity to create a wide variety of inventions, which included of a no-drip ice cream cone, woman's corset, and a special hairpin. However, in 1936, the Great Depression forced Tupper and his company into bankruptcy at age 30, crushing his goals of becoming a millionaire. In the same year of being declared as bankrupt, Tupper met Bernard Doyle, the inventor of viscoloid plastic, who worked at the plastic manufacturing division of the DuPont Corporation, located in Leominster, Massachusetts. Tupper only began work for Doyle in 1937 and only stayed for a year. In 1938, at the age of 31, he used his work experience and expertise from working in DuPont Corporation and set up his own business, the Earl S. Tupper Company. Tupper purchased a few machines from DuPont and asked him for some black, inflexible pieces of polyethylene, a waste product of the oil refining process. This led to the first Tupper Plastics Factory in Farnhamsville, Massachusetts in 1942. Tupper purified the waste product and moulded it to create lightweight, non-breakable containers, cups, bowls, plates, navy signal lamps and even gas masks that were used in World War II. Tupper dreamed of the Tupperization of every kitchen in America. After the war, Tupper changed the company's focus to creating a new line of plastics, in particular kitchen utensils and plastic storage containers. However, sales were tough as the products were associated to the poor reputation of other plastics and customers couldn't understand the benefits of the new product without an explanation and demonstration. In the late 1940s, two salespeople were selling high quantities of Tupperware products through home sales through offering Tupperware as part of their own product line. This attracted Tupper's attention. These two salespeople were Thomas Demigelli and Brownie Wise. The trio met in 1951 and developed together a new plan to distribute Tupperware. Wise suggested to develop a marketing strategy similar to the Stanley Home Product Company's in-home selling parties. This existing concept came to be known as the Tupperware Home Party Plan. Damagella and his wife were the first distributors of Tupperware using the Tupperware Home Party Plan. Wise was promoted to Vice President of Tupperware Home Parties in 1951 a position she held until early 1958, but was fired due to a difference of opinion. That same year, Tupper sold his company to the Rexall Corporation for $16 million, divorced his wife, gave up his US citizenship to avoid taxes, and brought an island just off the coast of Costa Rica. Earl Tupper died in 1983 at the age of 76 after suffering a heart attack. Earl Silas Tupper's tumbler from the exhibition What Was Good Design was featured due to its importance throughout history, originally in the American household. The tumbler slash containers use airtight and watertight tupper lids to prevent any spillage and food spoilage. This particular feature enhanced his Tupperware line. 
The form and unique design of the containers allow for innovative marketing, securing Tupperware success. Good design makes a product useful. A product is brought to be used. It has to satisfy certain criteria, not only functional, but also psychological and aesthetic. Good design emphasizes the usefulness of a product whilst disregarding anything that could possibly detract from it. The tumbler is a product specifically brought to be used for the purpose of containing food within it. The product is not only satisfying to the touch due to Tupper's reinvention of plastic making it smoother, but is aesthetically satisfying due to the soft colours available for purchase. In the example shown, you can notice the blue and pink of the tumbler are gentle to the eye. The tumbler uses a simple design to not detract from its purpose. Good design is aesthetic. The aesthetic quality of a product is fundamental to its usefulness because products we use every day affect our person and our well-being. But only well-executed objects can be beautiful. The tumbler uses simple lines and curves, a soft but sturdy plastic material and soft colours to create a beautiful aesthetic that is pleasantly beautiful to the eye, allowing for the design itself to be a well-executed product. Good design is unobtrusive. Products fulfilling a purpose are like tools. They are neither decorative objects nor works of art. Their design should therefore be both neutral and restrained to leave room for the user's self-expression. Tupper's product fulfills its purpose of storing food. His products aren't decorative or an art piece, but instead it is neutral, simple and restrained, allowing the user to decide their own self-expression of the product. Good design is long-lasting. It avoids being fashionable and therefore never appears antiquated. Unlike fashionable design, it lasts many years, even in today's throwaway society. Tupper's work is noticeably not fashionable due to its simple design not appearing antiquated. Due to the good quality make of the product and material, Tupper's design will last many years. Good design is as little design as possible. Less but better because it concentrates on the essential aspects and the products are not burdened with non-essentials. Back to purity, back to simplicity. Tupper's product uses simplicity within its design. It concentrates on functionality and doesn't stray the design to having any unnecessary components. From reading over Dieter Ram's principles of good design, I have come to realise that only some of the principles are met in my work, while others aren't touched. On a closer inspection of my designs from my year 12 folio, it contained a logo, a package design and a poster. I consider my designs to be useful in how it is perceived as being functional, psychologically and aesthetically. My work holds obtrusive elements due to being quite decorative and definitely is not simple and restrained. My design isn't long lasting as it is fashionable within today's society, but that could quickly change. However, compared to the work of Tupper, there's a lot of fine tuning needed to be done. As his design successfully meet the principles of good design, I need to focus on my designs more in a refining process to be more simplified and unobtrusive, as well as to not follow any fashion within society.